And that, my friends, is what listening to a Psy song sounds like, or feels like, whatever. This is uh, episode 55 of Radio Free Innsmouth. We are going to be covering some more shit from Psy, because apart from Peste Noir, of course, they're probably my uh, current favorite band. Peste Noir will always have the number one spot. But yeah, Psy, they're pretty good, and I feel like I should apologize, because I promised you guys a new Psy episode two weeks ago, and then uh, I had some computer troubles. So you see, maybe about a month ago, I got this error message on my piece of shit 2015 laptop that the fan wasn't working, it was going to overheat, you're going to lose all your data, you're going to fucking die, and... You know what? I looked up some manuals online on how to open this bitch up and fix that fan right up, and I was like, At last, I shall demonstrate my computer skill. And it seemed like I fixed it. You know, I uh, cleaned out the fan a bit, got some dust mode out of it. You know, there might have been a little bit of condensed vape juice, whatever. But it was working fine for a while. And then it started making scary, loud noises again. So I took it apart and cleaned it again. Yeah, I took it apart, cleaned it again, kept doing that for a while, because, uh, as you know... I love computers! I love LSI, and CPU, and RAM, and ROM, and even the lowly printed circuit boards! And I felt like I finally had it working for a bit, until, uh, one day the fan just fucking stopped. And I took it all apart, and cleaned it very thoroughly and put it back together and now the fan just doesn't want to run at all the computer keeps yelling at me every time the time i try to do anything with it so i got my old computer out now and it was really hard to get fucking uh, audacity running on this bitch because i haven't used this fucker in like five years and it's just a big old pain and i'm left here with my dick in my hand trying to do rfi last week while i'm repairing the install of visual c plus plus screaming at the universe like <laughs> So I have a new fan coming in the mail. Hopefully this one will work. If not, I will do what everybody's been telling me to do and just invest in, like, building a fucking desktop. Meanwhile, I finally got this old laptop working again, so I should be able to do RFI, and it works for the show. That's about all I really need out of the computer and life in general right now, apart from a Japanese girlfriend. What is this? Sorry, I just felt like I needed to explain to the folks at home why they didn't get their RFI last week, given that it is the most discussed facet of the podcast on the internet by the uh, the hate bus fan base. Or not, I don't know. But anyways, we're getting back to some fucking Psy. So the uh, the second Psy album, because last week we talked about Scorn Defeat, the first one. The second one's called Infidel Art. It's pretty similar to Scorn Defeat. It's maybe a little bit weirder, but to be honest, I'm not as familiar with it. I've only owned the CD for maybe like uh, three years, as opposed to the third Psy album, which I'm going to talk about. I've owned that one since high school. I've heard it almost as many times as Scorn Defeat. So we're going to do some Hail Horror Hail for everybody. Oh shit! First millisecond of the record, we're already rocking out with some dank fucking solos. You! Yeah. And he's coughing. He's coughing. And he's yelling. And you can hear a plentiful amount of uh, 70s hard rock influence, which will surely turn some people off. Whatever. But more than anything, you can tell that this album is even weirder than the two prior Psy albums. It's, we're fully in bonkers territory, as uh, Mirai Kawashima puts it. Every sound on this album is deliberate. And if you find that some parts of the album are strange, it isn't because the music is in itself strange but because your conscious self is ill-equipped to comprehend the sounds produced upon this recording. So with that very ambitious statement in mind, let's break down the anatomy of my personal favorite track on this record, entitled 4249. Very Black Sabbath intro, especially here. He does that whole Tony Iommi bar across the uh, 12th fret on the guitar for a meow noise like in War Pigs. And some appropriately doomy riffs. The 
And we are into the weirdness. Lots of bizarre dreamlike keyboards over ambiance black metal guitars. But this is really just kind of the intro to the song, as cool as it is. You gotta get through that to get to the real meat of what's going on. I will protect thy heaven if we want planet me. Well, this guy's torturing God over thrash riffs. What else? I will fight the devil in hell if it dies upon my name. And he's spiting the devil. What is this lunacy? With some fucking weird doom metal and industrial sounds that all flow into each other still. Very talented band. So after we get through a little bit of that, he hits you with the real weird shit. So you got some jangly acoustics reminiscent of a uh, fellow weirdo black metalers root before we get into the trademark Murai Kawashima weird ass 70s disco keyboards as he stalks the night. So that's what you're in for on this record is a lot of very strange, very 70s stuff. With a healthy dose of black metal, don't you forget it, fucker. Well, check it out. It's fucking Merciful Fate riffs. You know how much I love those, right? Right. This actually reminds me almost a little bit of uh, their neighbors across the pond, Grand Belial's Key from the great state of uh, Virginia. The healthy dose of groove. So let you know that they mean fucking business. And lots of weird little distant guitars. Whatever this is. I don't know what to call this part, but it's cool. It's mostly just kind of a neat little transition to this death metal stuff. Right around here. See, look how nicely it flows, even when it's being weird. And then we hit this part. Shit, it's fucking Celtic Frost! Yeah, boy. So, I don't know, maybe you don't like this part if you're gay or something. You've got a Tanji Warrior style uh, solo fading in there. What's that to like? So, yeah, this album, it's pretty cool for the most part. Occasionally, it gets a little too weird. You know, I, I, I gotta apologize to my uh, glorious Japanese ancestors for not understanding all of the sounds of this album because my mind is ill-equipped, blah, 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 whatever. But uh, third song on this album, I think it's called 12 Souls. It's just mostly weird dogs, noises, and fucking drum machines and obnoxious continuous orchestra hits. Okay, now we've done it. Every time we say owner of a lonely heart, <laughs> we get a yes orchestra hit. All right, hey, hang on. Test, test, owner of a lonely heart. <laughs> well, for now, let's just avoid owner of a, you yeah, know, a lonely <laughs> heart. Right. <laughs> well, that's honestly the only song on here I don't like. All the other times where it gets too weird, it does like a weirdness aroboros where it gets so fucking like strange that it goes back around to being awesome like uh check out the song the dead sing where they utilize this wacky um air raid siren shit at the beginning over hard fucking 80s style industrial music spooky i like it I like it very much, in fact. But, you're not gonna believe what happens when the air raid siren comes back later in the song, what they're gonna do with it. So, you know, black metal and such, and here comes that air raid siren. This I dig, this is really cool. Blend of morbidity, and almost sort of like a 50s style cuteness. So I've seen a lot of people 
describe the uh, the Latter Day Psy albums as being like sonic horror movies that go through a lot of tone shifts. But if there's any horror movie that this Psy album in particular is like, it's got to be. If you hadn't seen that uh, particular 1977 Japanese horror comedy surrealist masterpiece, you really should. It's almost sort of Evil Dead before Evil Dead, but with this kind of weird cutesiness and like kitsch to it, but not in like a not in an obnoxious hipster way, and more of like a very earnest way that does a lot of very interesting cinematic tricks and kind of genre splicing. And if you have seen that movie and you liked it, you'll probably dig this uh, Psy album. So next time we get here, you know, next time we do this RFI thing, I'm not going to say next week because you never fucking know with all my computer problems I've been having. But uh, next time, hopefully we're going to move on to the next Psy album because they're kind of my favorite band right now. So I'll see you around, I guess. <laughs> So, how do you like my swimming? How do you like my swimming? It's always someone else.